Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat, and we're helping you excel at Excel. And here we are with another lesson, and it's mainly about removing the formatting paintbrush, uh, and we will get into that, but there will be some other things that we do as well, so let's get started. Now, remember, I'm a bit of a slow talker, so make sure you increase the play speed of this video. Uh, go to the tools cog on the player bar of the video and set playback speed. Just click on that and get to 1.5 or 1.75. And you'll find the video flows a lot better if it's going faster. Uh, this is a detailed lesson, even though we're doing uh, how to remove the painter formatting tool, we're also going to discuss some other things as well. So there is an index timeline so that if all you want to see is how to get rid of the uh, annoying paintbrush, you can do that, but you can also look at the other things. So the annoying orange, if you've ever seen the annoying orange videos on YouTube, it's a, uh, what's a phenomenon on YouTube, and they were very, very clever animations and very funny, and the orange was so annoying. Well, that's what this paintbrush is like in Excel. We found that to be very annoying because all of a sudden it appeared on our screen and then you couldn't get rid of it. Like pressing escape doesn't get rid of it. Clicking off it doesn't get rid of it. There seemed to be no way at all to uh, remove that paintbrush. So anyway, first thing is what is this formatting paintbrush? We're going to tell you what it is and explain what it does. Uh, when you insert and delete rows and columns on a spreadsheet, so we're going to show you how to do that because you'll need that uh, know that for other lessons in our course. And then finally, the answer is to use the F2, or on most laptops, you have to hold down this little FN button in the left-hand corner, and then press the F2 key, and that's what takes away the paintbrush, okay? So if you were just looking for the magic answer, uh, you can go to the video timeline and see where we show you that exactly, but that's the magic answer. The F2 key is the one that gets rid of the annoying paintbrush, which can be as annoying as the annoying orange. And after you've watched this video, just for a nice break, uh, have a look at one of those annoying orange videos on YouTube. They're great. Uh, now we're going to fix wrap text, show you that a uh, thing came up with our students doing one of the exercises. And what happened was our wrap text didn't seem to work. And uh, we'll show you what happened there and how to fix it. Uh, how to align text in cells, changing column width. So we're gonna change row heights and column widths, show you how to do both of those things. And first we're gonna discuss everything and show you kind of in steps what has to be done. And then at the end of the video, we're just gonna go into Excel and do all those things so you can see a live demo in Excel of exactly what we've been talking about, okay? So what is the format of paintbrush? It's used to copy and paste to cell formatting. So whether some, some lettering is bold or not, but you don't actually copy the, the, the lettering itself, okay? So uh, it looks like this, it's on the home tab on Excel, and it's this guy here, the format painter. And the idea is that you will have clicked on the cell that you want to have some, um, that's got the formatting that you want. And then you'll click on this paintbrush. And once the paintbrush is activated, you can click on all these other cells and they'll get the exact same formatting. So they're gonna have like bold red text because the original one had bold red text. But whatever contents is in there, whatever sort of number or um, word or anything is in that cell, that doesn't get copied, only the color of the text and the bolding. So only the formatting gets copied. And that's the idea of how it's used. And I uh, will show you some of that later on. Now, if you wanna find out more about that formatter paintbrush, uh, there's a link here that you can go to exceltactics.com. And it's got a thing about how to use this painter brush and how it works. Uh, for most of you though, the first time it appears, you're just gonna find that it's annoying. And we'll show you in this practical example what's happening. So Cyril's planning this Cyber Monday sale. So I think we saw Cyril Cyber Store in our first lesson in this course when we were learning how to add up totals and so on. And what he wants to do is he wants to have the item that's for sale have its normal price here, let's like say normal PR. This is supposed to be the discount percentage, but it's only saying discount at the moment. So he wants to take 10% off this motherboard, 15% off the uh, DDR3 RAM. So that's a good buy. And these are gonna be the selling prices, the reduced prices. Uh, 
that are gonna happen during that cyber sale. Now working with percentages and how to do these discounts, we've got a whole nother lesson on that in the course uh, after this one. So don't worry about that at the moment, just worry that we've got this uh, spreadsheet here and that's what it contains at the moment. So the next item Cyril wants to add in is he's got this LG 32 inch gaming 4K monitor uh, for $620 and he wants to reduce it by 10%. Now he wants to keep things in alphabetical order. Notice here we've got A, ASUS, then we've got C for Corsair, then we've got P for power supply. So LG would need to come between C and P. So he needs to kind of put it between uh, the RAM and the power supply here. We need to make another line or another row to put it on. So we need to insert a row above the power supply one. So it just comes in this gap between six and seven. And that's what we'll show you what how to do now. So uh, what you do is you click on number seven, the power supply, because inserting always inserts above the row you clicked on. So we click on that. And when you click on that number seven, what you should see is your whole row all the way across the page is gonna get highlighted and selected. Okay, and then all you have to do is right click on your mouse and go insert, okay, to make the row. So that's the second step, right click and insert. And what'll happen is that you'll get your blank row, okay, but this annoying paintbrush appears. So what's that all about, okay? Um, so we wanna take that screen away because it's kind of blocking power supply. It stays in the way of where you might wanna type in cells. So it can be very, very annoying. So we need to uh, remove it. Now, if you try the usual things like the ESC, the escape key in the top left-hand corner of the keyboard, uh, or you try just the enter key, or you try clicking away from it on another cell, or you try clicking on the things, nothing seems to make it go away. So that's why it's like the annoying orange. It is the Excel annoying paintbrush. And how you actually remove it is you need to press the F2 function key. Now, if you're on a Lenovo laptop like we're using, down the bottom left-hand corner, there'll be an FN key uh, next to the CTRL key, this guy FN, and you need to push that down and hold it down with your left hand, and then with your other hand, click this one, the speaker minus, which is actually, you can hardly see it, but in little writing there, it says F2. So you've got to hold down the FN key and press the F2. And most laptops work like this, so if you're on a Dell laptop, the FN key is just here and it's in blue, uh, and on Apple laptops, it's in the left-hand corner and it usually does brightness here, makes the screen brighter, but if you hold down the FN key of your left hand and press this F2 of your right hand, then it does the actual F2 action and that F2 action will take away uh, that paintbrush and stop it being in its way. So hold down the FN key and press the F2. That is what you do. Uh, now, adding the data, so we've got rid of the annoying paintbrush now. So now it's not in the way. We have that blank row, so you can just type it in. It's an LG 32 inch 4K gaming monitor, $620, 10% off is 55800. So you can just type all those values in. To get the percent sign, it's just shift and uh, five on the keyboard. And that's that done. So he's got his extra row in, and they're the four items he's gonna feature on his ad for his Cyber Monday sale. Uh, but there's one thing still going on here that the wrap texting doesn't seem to have worked on the headings, okay? And that's what we're gonna look at next uh, in this video. So wrap text on headings, normal price, he wants it to show like this where the normal and the price are split across two different lines and that's called wrap text. And I think we talked about that in the first lesson, but we're certainly gonna talk about it here. And when you click in that cell, you can see that it is does actually have the contents normal price because you click in the cell and look up on this FX. Uh, that will always show you what's actually in there. And we can see it does have normal price in there, but the thing is that normally you would just click the wrap text and it would do this. It would wrap around and you'd have normal price and the column would fit it in okay. But when you click the wrap text on this particular spreadsheet and you'll be able to download this um, start spreadsheet from a link in the, uh, video description downloads. And 
it doesn't do it. It still just stays as normal here and we don't see the price part of it, okay? And all these other ones actually have full things in them and should be wrapping and they won't wrap either. So the wrap text button just doesn't seem to be working on this spreadsheet. But what we can do is we can change the height of this row because you can see it needs here, it's a skinny normal row, but to be wrap text, it needs to kind of be double size to fit in uh, the two lines of writing. So we can, we'll have to just jump in and do that manually manually by adjusting the row height. Now how you adjust the row height is that if you uh, have your finger off the mouse button and you move over here between uh, the four and five rows, okay, this black arrow should appear with a kind of a bar across it. If we zoom in, we can see that. Now we've made it gray, so it's a bit more visible here, but on your Excel, it'll actually be black and it'll be this little double arrow with a black uh, line across it. Now when that appears, uh, while you're moving your mouse sort of here, it'll appear. And when it appears, what you need to do is you push down uh, the mouse button and then you can drag this down to make this whole blue row here uh, bigger. And that's what we did. We just pushed down when that appeared, dragged down with our mouse, holding down the mouse button, and we made everything wider. And now we can see normal price. We can see selling price. It's really good. Are we quite can't quite see percentage discount though. Okay, something's going wrong there. So that's a problem on column C. And like we changed the row height here, we can change the row kind of width, how wide column C is. If we get that double arrow, we can uh, push it backwards and forwards. And we'll show you what you mean. Uh, you go with your mouse, finger off the button, and just get in between C and D. This guy will appear, the black arrow with the bar. When it does appear, that's when you push down your mouse and you'll be able to uh, pull this out a bit and make it a bit wider like we have here. And then suddenly discount percentage will appear all right. Okay, and then once it appears, you've moved this, you can take your finger off the button, of course, and that's all good. So when you're doing this wrap text, uh, if it doesn't work and do it all automatically, you're gonna have to get this double arrow thing by hovering the mouse near the boundary between things and either stretch down to make a row higher. And you may also need to go up in the columns and you don't have to click to select anything. You hover until you get the double arrows, finger off the button, just moving around. Then you push down the mouse. Then with the mouse button held down, you can kind of drag this backwards and forwards. And we'll show you that when we get to the demo uh, near the end of this lesson. Now we can also do some alignment, text alignment. Notice these are all pushed over to the left. You can push them in the middle and in the right. And we'll just talk about that. Vertical alignment's what we want to look at in particular because see this item, it's kind of pushed down the bottom of that blue box. Now it'd be nicer if we could make it in the middle of the blue box so it matches better with our wrap text uh, rows. And how we can do that is just click on this item so that cell is highlighted in green in Excel. So that's the selected cell. Then on that, make sure you're on the home tab and in these alignment options, if you just use this middle uh, vertical alignment, this one here, that will put it in the middle like this. And you can see when it's in the middle, it's just a, a nicer match for everything else. And it looks a lot better. So that's just a little cosmetic thing. Uh, click on the cell and click middle alignment. If you did that left hand one next to it, that would push it right up the top. So I was banging its head on the top and that wouldn't be good. You need to use this middle alignment one. Okay, now we did all sorts of things there to insert rows to add in that LG gaming monitor. And we also learned how to change row heights if wrap text isn't working. Uh, the last thing we want to sort of look at before we show you everything in Excel is inserting columns. So what Cyril wants to do is he wants to add another column in. So at the moment he's got item and he's got all the prices and percents, but he wants to have this column just here. So it needs to be where column B is and it needs to be a product code. So he knows exactly what it was because he might have um, sort of some different Corsair DDR3 RAM. Uh, there might be sort of uh, sort of high performance and sort of the normal one or something. So he wants to make sure it's the CA16 DDR3 is the one that gets discounted and goes on sale. All right, so he needs the exact product code to make sure he gets exactly the right items. And see this power supply, it's actually a CA, which is his code for Corsair. So it's actually a Corsair power supply, uh, which is going on sale. All right, so we need to get these product codes in. Now, how are we gonna make 
an extra column and put these four ones in, just type them in. All right, so that's what we're looking at here. And inserting a column, step one is you need to click on this B and that will highlight the whole column going right, 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 right down to the bottom of the page. Okay, and then once that's highlighted, right click your mouse and choose insert. And what that's going to do is it's going to make a blank column here in between A and C. So we've got our blank column we, that we want. It's fairly wide at the moment, so we know how to change the width. But this is where we use the actual annoying paintbrush. This is where it can be useful. Now the default is that it's going to actually make this column, see how it's already made the blue bar and it's already going to have actual white writing on there when we type because it's been for formatted the same as the left hand one. If you wanted it actually to look the same format as this right hand one, if it, if it had different colors, like if it had a red background and yellow writing or something, you'd click on this format same as right and then Excel wouldn't grab the 385 and 105, but it would grab that formatting and put it in here, okay? But we just want to write use this formatting. So just click on that. So there's a little down arrow next to the paintbrush. Click on that little triangle down arrow. Click on format same as left and then you'll be good to go. And that's what we actually use that formatting our paintbrush for. Okay, so adding product codes. Now you can just uh, type in here product code and do your wrap text. Everything works nicely because we made the column bigger. And let's type in our first product code which was ASUS 1313, that was the first one. Uh, now we go into this box here to enter the next uh, product code. Then usually something interesting will happen in Excel. Excel uses this AI kind of auto suggestions uh, to work out what your other product codes might be. So it's kind of guessing, oh, I typed the SUS in here, the first word, and then he put a number. So I'm going to get the first word here, Corsair, and then I'm going to think of a number and put that in. So Excel is trying to sort of help you out. Now, if they were good and you like them, you could actually just click on them all and select them and it would put them in. But we don't like them. That isn't what we wanted. Cyril wanted these ones. He wanted CA16DDR3. So all you have to do is just keep typing. Just type an A here and 16 and DDR3. And then all this auto suggestion stuff will go away. Okay, that's kind of called... Uh, I think in Excel it's called Flash Fill, and we might look at Flash Fill in another lesson sometime, but we don't want it here. So when the, you type C, this will all appear. Just keep typing, do the CA16, and that'll all go away, okay, and you'll be all right. Uh, so let's jump across to Excel now and just show you everything we've done. So this is the Cyril CyberSource... <laughs> That's a, that's a tongue twister, is it? Cyril Cyber Sales Start Spreadsheet. And that's what it looks like. Okay, so you can get that by looking uh, in the lesson uh, description, the video description, the downloads link, or your teacher or instructor might already have this for you and give it to you. Uh, either way, you get that. And what we're going to do is try and turn that, well, we are going to turn that into this one. We've got the extra row for the gaming monitor, and we've put that in. We're going to make an extra column here to put in all the product codes. We're going to get the wrap texting working. We're going to use the paintbrush when we need it. We're going to press function F2 to get rid of that annoying paintbrush when we don't need it. So let's jump across to Excel and do that, and that will finish the lesson. Okay, here we are in Excel, and this will be the uh, start spreadsheet you get. And you can see we've just put a picture in here of what the finished one looks like so that you know what you're aiming for. And that's what we want to try and get it to. And this is what we're starting off with. So remember, the first thing was that um, Cyril wanted to get this LG 32 inch 4K gaming monitor here. So remember, the idea was to click on uh, this row number seven, click on the seven and then let go of your mouse and see the whole row all the way across is highlighted now. Then you right click and from the options you pick insert, so insert and that will make a row. Now we've got that annoying paintbrush there and you can do insert options but we just don't want to do anything. We've got our row and we're happy. So to get rid of that paintbrush, remember hold down FN key and press your F2 button up the top of your keyboard and that's now gone away and we can do our stuff. So this needed to be LG 32 inch uh, 4K gaming monitor. All right, now that was um, going to be, now click in the next one here, 
the price of that, I think it's already formatted in price for you. Uh, so that was going to be, that's normal retail, $620. Ooh, that must be a pretty good monitor. Uh, so it's put the dollar sign in automatically. So that's important. You just type the 620. Excel takes care of all the formatting, all right? If you put the dollar sign in yourself, it's not good in Excel because Excel later on won't, will not be able to do maths. Uh, this is having a 10% discount. So we just type one zero and the percent sign's already there for us. If it wasn't, you'd have to use shift and five on your keyboard, shift and five, but it's already put it there. So that's good. Now I'm using the right hand arrow there. Instead of pressing enter or, or mouse clicking, I'm just using the right hand arrow key to move to the next one. And the next one is when it's got that, it's 558.00 for its price. Now Excel, uh, did not do the dollars there for us, which is interesting. Oh yes, it has when we clicked off it, okay? So we just had to type in 558, and then if you arrow to the right, or just press enter, or just click somewhere else on the spreadsheets, I can just go 558 and just click uh, down here, just underneath. All right, so that's good. We've got that gaming monitor stuff done. That's all inserted in. Now, the next problem was on this, uh, see up the top here next to FX, it's saying that that says normal price, all right? But if we go up here and do wrap text, uh, that's with it wrapped, that's with it unwrapped, all right? And you can see the problem is that the wrap text, usually wrap text, like if we were down here and we typed normal uh, price, Okay, and on that cell, we did a wrap text. See how Excel's automatically made the column wider for, the row, sorry, wider for us. But for some reason, I'll just press the undo key up the top, or you can do control C, T, R, L, and Z. I'll just do that a couple of times. Uh, for some reason, uh, it isn't automatically doing it up here. So remember the go is you move over between four and five, so you can be anywhere on the spreadsheet when you do this, but I would just happen to be clicked on this top row. It doesn't really matter. Uh, see, there's some, uh, it's hard to see, but there is a double arrow with a line across it there. When I get that, uh, that's when I push down the mouse button and I just pull that down basically like that. So it's going to be twice as wide and then everything fits in except for percentage discount. So on C, I can go up the top here. I've got my finger off the mouse button. I'm not selecting anything and I'm just going till I get that double arrow. Can you see that double arrow there? That's when I push down my mouse and I can stretch that wider and I can also go backwards. Now, if I go backwards, it's no good. It just makes it worse. I just need to stretch it wider until discount percentage can fit in like that. And that's all fitting nicely. All right, so that's that done. So now I've got all the text wrapping and it's all looking good. Now we also did that thing with item because see our items kind of push down the bottom here. Uh, there's all these alignments. So at the moment it's horizontally, it's left aligned. You could put it in the center like that, but that doesn't really look good. A cross on the right hand side looks really bad. So I'll just move it back to the left. But these are vertical alignments. If you use top align, this one here, uh, it jumps right up the top, which is ugly. We want to use this one, this uh, middle aligning vertically. So it's in the middle because when it's in the middle, it kind of matches up better with these other ones. All right. So that's really cool. And we just got one more thing to do, which is getting these product codes. All right. So let's just move that round a bit there. Uh, we've got to get these product codes, ASUS and CA and all those things. So that's where we need to click on column B. So it's all selected. See how it's going uh, all the way down the page when you do that. That's okay. Then we right click and we go insert. All right. And what it does is it pushes all the other ones across. So we were on B and we did right click and insert. Now it's very wide and all this has to say is product code. So let's type that in, in caps product code. All right. Now that's way too wide. Remember what we're going to do is just go up here and get our double arrows and make that shorter and then use our wrap text button here and it should wrap around, but you need to be actually clicked on it would help. And then it wraps around and that looks pretty good product code. And in here, we just need to put those codes. So the first one is ASUS 1313, except I have not used capitals, which isn't good. Um, ASUS 
S13 13 13 and then we uh, just press enter and go down to the next one then now the next one is CA ah oh, now see how it did that suggesting uh, can I just go back here it did that Ah, it's not going to do it now, but it did the auto suggesting, but I just kept typing. Okay. So just ignore that auto suggesting that comes up and just keep typing. Uh, DDCA 16 DDR3. That's that one. This is the LG 32 um, G for gaming, then a four and a K. And this last one is just um, Corsair power supply. So it comes out caps. CAP 750 and that's all the product codes done and that's it finished all right so we'll give that one up there the giant sick of approval <laughs> okay so that's it we're done uh, so let's just go back and get the lesson wrapped up all worked out fine now if you want one of these fabulous excelling excel t-shirts we don't uh, sell these we don't get any money from this either but you can get them on ebay you just go to ebay and type microsoft excel t-shirt and you get them from france or the uk they might take a while to get here with this chinese wuhan flu business that's on at the moment but they will get there eventually and so the next steps is we've got lots of lessons on excel in our beginner course well we don't want to overwhelm you of lots of lessons, but I think there's around 10 altogether, which will take you all the way through entering data, how to do percentages, how to do statistics, right through to everything you can do with charts and comparison charts and graphs, uh, which will really get you a solid grounding in Excel. So we suggest you go on to the next lessons and give this one a big thumbs up, like subscribe, subscribe to our channel subscribe subscribe so that you can always get notified when we've got new lessons coming and we also do our lessons in programming and microsoft access so once you've learned excel most people then go on to learn the office 365 database package which is uh, kind of like excel in three dimensions uh, and that's the access database so you can go on to do our access course we've got the southern dog club course in that there's plenty to do and plenty of fun to be had. So we'll see you in the next lesson.